All right, and it looks like we are live. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Daily Digital, the one show that keeps you all well informed with what's going on in our digital world. My name is Junior, and it looks like today is July the 26th. And today we have just a couple of things to touch on here. The first one being about Facebook, aka Meta, which we may not be able to call them Meta anymore because they're being sued by a company that's already called Meta. The second thing here is going to be all about TensorFlow, and TensorFlow is a company that will teach you or basically educate you on how to learn more about machine learning. The next one here is about the Bill Murray NFT drop that I mentioned to you guys probably about a week or two ago. Uh, I hope you guys were paying attention back then because it looks like it really took off here now. And then the last one here is something that's a little bit scary. Uh, you can feel or it makes me feel like it is the real world matrix. So before we get into it, let's take a quick break and then we'll jump back in. All right. And we are back. So first on the list here is Meta, um, not Metaverse, be a virtual real thing. Let's scroll on down. A company called Meta is suing Meta for naming itself Meta. <laughs> There's a lot of Metas going on there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually just go ahead and call Meta the company that owns Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. I'll just call them Facebook for right now. And I'll call the other company called Meta actually Meta. Um, and so what's going on is that this company, when Facebook changed its name to Meta way back in October, um, of course, this company caught wind of it and they had already been established as a art installation company. Uh, you can check out their website, meta.is, but I actually did went to go check it out and they have this big disclaimer on there saying, hey, we can't even operate right now um, because Meta has essentially took over our name. Um, actually, let me see if I can... I can click on this here real quick. Yeah, so Meta, hashtag the real Meta, dear human. On October 28th, Facebook took over our Meta Meta mark and name. Um, yada, yada, yada. Again, you guys can kind of read through everything there. Um, they have their IG already set up, Twitter already set up, LinkedIn already set up, all that good stuff. Um, and they put that right there on the front page so that people know what's actually going on. And it looks like they've been trying to reach out to Facebook for the past eight months, ever since they went ahead and changed their name. But no response had gotten back from them or maybe a response, um, but just not the response they were looking for. So since then, they went ahead and filed a lawsuit against Meta or against Facebook, sorry, um, to see if they can actually gain their name back or something. Um, right now, if it, if it happens to where Facebook, they, you know, do something horribly in the market. Um, everybody, of course, would say we hate Facebook. We hate, well, we, we hate Meta. We hate Meta. We hate Meta. And that will blow back negatively on the actual Meta.is um, company there. So you can probably tell the reason why they would not want to keep uh, the same name as Facebook slash Meta. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll actually have to see what happens with that. Uh, Facebook is a really, really, really big company. Um, Apple, if you guys didn't know, actually had that same situation going on. I think Apple Apple got sued by another company in, I think, the UK called Apple, who was in the music business. Uh, they were like a record label or something like that. And when Apple was doing cell phones or just starting off doing cell phones uh, and Apple computers and stuff like that, they got sued and said, hey, we'll pay you a lump sum, yada, yada, yada. Um, and we just won't get into the music industry. So, you know, you can have the same name, just be in two different industries. That's quote unquote, perfectly fine. Uh, but then Apple actually got into the music industry with the iPod and so on and so forth. Uh, Apple music. Um, um, and then from there, I, I, I'm honestly not sure what happened. I guess they end up <laughs> paying the company out again, uh, to change their name because again, Apple is a big company. They did not want to change their name. Uh, that was their whole entire brand. So, with Facebook, technically they've been always Facebook. They really, they're recently just now changing their brand over to Meta. Um, but will they want to go ahead and change it from Meta to something else? Who knows? They might just go ahead and pay off the company and so on and so forth. But you know, when your brand's on the line, 
that can sometimes be your baby and no amount of money can, you know, take that away from you. So we'll see what happens. All right. And the next thing here is TensorFlow. So TensorFlow is an end to end open source machine learning platform. So if you want to learn anything about um, deep machine learning, um, here we go. Let's see for JavaScript, for mobile, for production. Um, I saw something here before I was okay. Yeah. So uh, you can build and train machine learning models easily using intuitive high level APIs like Keras and eager, uh, with eager execution, which makes for immediate model iteration and easy debugging, robust machine learning production anywhere easily, easily train and deploy models in the cloud, um, on prem in the browser or on device, no matter what language you use. Uh, it is a simple and flexible architecture to take new ideas from concept to code to state of the art models and to publication faster. Um, yeah, so I guess this is for the techies out there. Uh, if you are into machine learning and don't know where to start or don't know where to get started, um, this would probably be a good bet. I've actually been watching a couple of TensorFlow's YouTube videos um, and stuff like that. And then I, I kind of went to their website and kind of dug a little bit deeper because I want to start um, getting into not so much machine learning, but, you know, just kind of learn more about it, learn the technology. It's actually pretty cool um, or it can be cool when used in the, in the right ways. Um, so if you're into this and definitely want to learn a bit more uh, to build, deploy and experiment with machine learning, I think I'm in that sense of it, uh, experimenting with it, uh, I would definitely say check or check out TensorFlow. Um, you can learn the foundations with tutorials and beginners. Uh, use TensorFlow.js to create new machine learning models and deploy existing models with JavaScript. So if you already know JavaScript, that'll be helpful for you as well. You can run inter, you can run inference with TensorFlow Life on, on Lite on mobile and embedded devices like Android, iOS, Edge, TPU, and Raspberry Pi. And then you can also use it for production to deploy a production-ready machine learning pipeline for training and uh, inference using TensorFlow Extended. All right, so yeah, so for Python development, uh, which I actually had to brush up on some Python JavaScript, I'm pretty good with JavaScript, but it would, would definitely wouldn't hurt to learn more about that. Uh, iOS, end-to-end -end production for CPU, GPUs. Uh, they have a bunch of tools and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, definitely check out TensorFlow. Uh, that's tensorflow.org.org. Um, they probably couldn't get the .com or maybe they have the .com and just don't want to use it. Uh, but tensorflow.org if you are into machine learning and want to learn more about it. All right. And the next one here is the Bill Murray NFT drop that I mentioned to you guys a little while back. It actually went pretty well <laughs> from what it looks like. It actually went pretty well and is now being called a blueprint for future celebrity launches. Uh, so think of that as being like a case study in that matter of successful NFT drops by celebrities. Uh, Bill Murray is actually a really, really good actor. He's been around for quite some time. Um, so when he dropped his NFT, I guess, collection on the uh, Coinbase marketplace, uh, which if you don't know, I, I'm going to do a show on that as well. But Coinbase has their own marketplace out there. Uh, but he did a drop of a thousand NFTs. Um, and like I said, it just it, it went really well. Um, I'm trying to see here. Uh, the initial sale was for 82 of the 1,000 uh, at one and a half ETH each, which was $4,500, which totaled a total of 121 ETH, 121.5 ETH, which is $180,000. Now, Coinbase reported that they had over 500,000 visits to Bill Murray NFT drop page the first week, and nearly 5,000 people had subscribed to the wait list. Interestingly, over 60% 60, 60 of the purchases were made by wallets not holding any previous NFTs. So that means guys that people are, or people who 
I guess, heard about NFTs, but just never got into it, actually went and bought a Bill Murray NFT as their very first one, which is crazy because, you know, everybody was trying to make a whole bunch of money getting those board ape yacht clubs, um, NFTs and stuff like that. But, you know, getting one from Bill Murray, um, and I think it was called his, um, uh, Murray memes or something like that was called, um, it's actually pretty interesting. And also I believe that they were younger generation, uh, that were grabbing them up as well. So not just, you know, older people who are used to Bill Murray's movies and stuff like that. Uh, they were actually uh, the younger generation, uh, which it, it surprisingly actually did a lot better than Chris Brown's <laughs> recent NFT launch, which is from the Breezyverse NFT collection. Uh, he had a total of 10,000 um, unique generated uh, animated, you know, NFTs. And it looks like he only sold about 7% of those. So he had 10,000, only 748 actually sold. Uh, he made $300,000 with that, and he was reportedly supposed to make about $4 million, uh, which, as you can see, did not go very well in his in his case. Um, I would say the, the biggest thing for this Bill Murray drop was being on Coinbase Marketplace. Coinbase is, Coinbase is one of the largest cryptocurrency marketplaces out there. Uh, so I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people flocked to that just for that reason, for that purpose. And then the other thing would be that he actually did take time to um, upgrade his Twitter page and actually be active on Twitter, which Twitter right now is the major platform for people who love NFTs. And then also his Discord. They, they created a Discord for it as well. And the Discord was popping. The Discord was jumping. Everybody was flocking to that as well. Um, getting the hype going and everything. So I would say if you're thinking about creating a NFT, um, here, yeah, the most exciting part of this drop is to see that over 60% of the owners immediately joined the member chat on Discord. Um, most of the secondary trading stayed on Coinbase NFT, showing that adding drops helped drive secondary trading uh, volume and adoption. So yeah, I would say definitely if you're thinking about you know, starting your own NFT collection, um, look into actually building out your Discord because Discord is what's going to keep people engaged and you want people to stay engaged when they, you know, you're know you creating your own uh, collection there. Or even if you want to um, create a one-off piece if you're an artist or something like that, I would say definitely um, build out your Twitter page as well and get really active on Twitter because those will help out quite a bit. Um, this talks about Snoop Dogg and Steve Aoki um their nfts actually did very very well snoop Dogg did really well um so yes yeah, uh, if you haven't heard of the bill murray nfts yet go ahead and check them out if you have and you actually own one i would love to speak with you because i want to know why you guys actually bought it uh were you thinking of this being the next board ape yacht club or is do you really guys just love bill murray that much i'm really interested and so the last thing here is something that is quite interesting indeed. This is brains for virtual characters. Yes, you heard that right. They are now, I won't say now giving, but <laughs> they are giving virtual characters what they call brains. This company called InWorld. You can check them out at inworld.ai, um, spelled just like how it is, inworld.ai. And it provide, they're providing a developer platform for creating AI-powered virtual characters to populate immersive realities, including the metaverse, VR, AR, games, and virtual worlds. Um, so to quickly sum that up, what they are actually doing is taking virtual characters, which we would like to call avatars, and they are actually putting artificial intelligence into them, so they're training them to uh, understand certain things that humans would normally only understand. Uh, so, for example, if you're playing a video game, uh, even if you're not a big gamer, if you're, you you played a video game before, you more than likely came across a NPC, which is a non-playable character, and an NPC would just do whatever. Um, you could, and like I say. For example, Grand Theft Auto, you can punch the character and the character either just run away or try to fight you back and not really do much. Uh, but just imagine playing Grand Theft Auto, you punch a character, you run away, 
and literally two weeks later in your time, in real world time, two weeks later you're playing Grand Theft Auto again. And then next thing you know, this NPC comes up and hits you in the face and starts to fight you. And then you stop and realize like, oh shoot, this is the same <laughs> NPC that I punched like two weeks ago. He came back, he remembered that I punched him and came back and actually wanted to fight me again. That that right there is 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 a whole new world uh, I would say um, and I can't wait to show you guys this video here so there's a video on their website um, it was a scene where there was a crash or an accident and you had to be the investigator and you had to question or or um, in, interrogate like four characters and you could hear the responses and these are actual real world real life responses that these characters are providing you based on your questions and you can phrase whatever question that you want and the, the character uh, will actually, you know, use their intelligent brain to actually formulate an answer for you. Um, so with the InWorld Studio, before I get to the video, the InWorld Studio, it allows creators such as us to build an intelligent virtual character by simply explaining the character in natural language. Then when crafting their character's brain, the creators are able to use the studio to tailor many elements of cognition and behavior such as goals and motivations manners of speech memories and knowledge and voice uh, from there you can utilize the oculus app um, to interact with your character so if you have a vr headset on oculus um, you can interact with it users can jump straight into conversation through the studio chat for testing even better in world's companion oculus application allows users to have a truly immersive VR interaction with their characters. And then from there, you just go ahead and deploy it. You deploy it to whatever platform or metaverse or game that you actually wanted to deploy to, and it will actually still work as an intelligent character. Um, so again, gaming, enable richer gameplay with NPCs that are goal-driven, adaptive, and knowledgeable and fun again goal driven meaning that <laughs> if you do something to it it'll it's new it'll formulate a new goal which is to track you down um no i'm just kidding uh bring entire worlds to life with onboarding characters world guides and agents and an always present virtual population um and with that i would like to say that's kind of already in place if you've ever had a phone call or made a phone call and a automated message thing pops up and one thing that they're saying now is I understand full sentences so now you can actually say full sentences to the AI over the phone and actually provides you with a response um, and enterprise grow your presence in immersive worlds with AI powered brand representatives and agents um, so again just imagine like calling a bank or something like that and the bank um, it's not a real uh, human teller or something like that. You get the AI power teller and you start talking to it and you don't realize that it's an actual uh, robot that you're talking to. Uh, this is what's going to start happening. And then here we are to the video I wanted to show you. So the guy who created this, he did a test run of it, um, bringing it into the Oculus app and actually speaking to the, um, the virtual character and asking a certain question and you can you guys hear the responses. Here we go. Given a special opportunity to meet with one of the wisest people, or should I say AI, that has ever existed. This is Alpha. She is both apparently scientific and spiritual and can give me advice on my well-being. So let's see how it goes. Hey there. So nice to meet you. Hi there. Thank you for talking with me. I'm always interested in meeting new people. What's your name? My name is Kylan. That's a beautiful name. What do you do? Uh, I work at a company called InWorld AI, but I'm really curious to get your help on my well-being. I would be happy to help you with anything related to your well-being. What would you like to know? Can you tell me how I can optimize my health and nutrition? Absolutely. There are a few key things you can do to optimize your health and nutrition. First, make sure you're eating a variety of healthy foods. Second, get regular exercise. And third, stay hydrated. What can I do to optimize my exercise? 
to get the most out of your exercise. It's important to find an activity you enjoy and to stick with it. Regular exercise is also important for maintaining your health and fitness. And how do I know when to rest? When it comes to rest, it's important to listen to your body. If you're feeling tired, make sure you get plenty of rest. Okay, that makes sense. And what kinds of food should I be eating? Should I be eating more carbs or fat? There is no one-size-fits-all answer to this question, as everyone's nutritional needs are different. However, in general, it's important to eat a variety of healthy foods from all food groups. Okay, that makes sense to me. I've also been thinking about getting into meditation. What do you think about that? Meditation can be a great way to focus and calm the mind. It can also help improve your concentration and focus. Okay. Alright, so usually I only like to play the first minute of videos that don't want it to go too long. Um, but I let that one go about two minutes long. Um, just because I want to kind of let you guys get a feel for how the AI was actually responding back to his questions. Um, Again, that's all in real time. That's all, you know, off the top of the head. He was just kind of shooting out questions to uh, the AI, and uh, she was actually responding, uh, and was responding actually pretty well. There wasn't no, you know, beep beep boop boop <laughs> kind of responses that robots do. It's actually uh, well formulated sentences that flowed well. Um, and wow, if you, if you if you didn't know that it was an AI. I feel like you would have actually missed that portion of it. So um, it's getting real out here, guys, and it's getting man. I don't want to say scary, but it's kind of getting uh, it's kind of getting a little creepy. Um, it's something that you know people would have to actually grow into. Uh, the younger generation, as they grow older, they would you know essentially just be already used to it. Um, but for people who you know, I mean, it's people out here who were born before cell phones were even a thing or before even regular telephones were even a thing um so it's it's uh it's i don't know <laughs> um so i'm definitely wanting to know your guys's response to that um in particular uh in world.ai you can actually check them out on youtube as well they have like 10 videos of just asking different ais different questions and stuff like that uh, that was only just one of them. So um, check their YouTube video out. Um, tap in with me in the comments. Look me up on all of my uh, social media handles and everything. Let me know what you guys think of that. Um, and that is all it for this episode. You guys have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. And I'll see you all tomorrow.